Yo, 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 what's going on, guys? Welcome, welcome to Dope Talk TV. I got my boy Tax D Wolf in the motherfucking house. What's going on? What's going on? Welcome, welcome. Yo, let's get it, man. I'm excited, bro. How you been, bro? Man, <laughs> look, I went last time I spoke to you, I think I had like 10 properties. Uh, this time we're at 33. I was about to ask you, that was <laughs> it's like you read my mind, bro, for real, man. So tell me, like. What's been going on like with everything like like this year? You yo, know what I'm saying? Yo, we we cranked it up, man. I had this I had this we all have this perception that like we got to hustle, right? We we do. Yeah. But we need to multiply that. So it's not just about me. I can't be the only one hustling. Excellent. So now I have 5, 10, 20 other people out there, you know, putting the word out for me. You said you seen the signs. Yeah, right? I saw the sign last night. We that's had, we had that's some G shit. Up. Yeah, we I'm had happy. to step our game up, man. I need eyes, you know, eyes on more pe um more eyes on me basically. Exactly. Yeah, man. That's, that's good, bro. That's good, man. I, I seen that you went to Dubai. Tell me <laughs> tell me a little bit that like that's crazy, man. I always want to go to Dubai. Always. Dubai is nice, man, but as far as like partying goes, you know what I mean? They got yeah. different rules. You know, I couldn't even really like dance with my wife like I wanted to. What? Yeah, it's a little it's a little strict in certain spots. That's crazy, man. And how long were you out there? We stayed for about a week. You know, we did the, the all the desert, the you know, the dirt bikes or whatever, the I mean the buggies or yeah. like camel riding. Uh, Arabian nights. We, we had a good time, man. That's crazy. I saw you doing the snowboarding. Well, not snowboarding, but you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like gliding through the sand and shit. That's awesome, man. And how long was the flight? I mean, mm. the whole day, right? Mm. Uh, 14 hours. I think it took us. Yeah, about 14 hour flight, man. 14 hours, bro? 14 hours, man. Bro, I remember I went to Norway one time. It was like 11 hours, bro, and I couldn't even do it. Now, at least Emirates is uh, like, it's an awesome flight, man. They, they're giving you meals, you know, drinks, complimentary and all that. Yeah. I mean, you pay for it with your ticket, but uh, Emirates is, is pretty nice. Man. That's crazy, man. I mean, that's, if you don't mind me asking, how much was the ticket to get there? Honestly, it was about a, a thousand a person. That's yeah, it. Yeah, it's like eight hundred to a thousand per person. That's not bad at all, bro. It ain't that bad. The the hotels aren't that bad either, really. Uh, you know, if you can, if you can, if you have about two thousand, three thousand bucks, you can go to Dubai and have money for food and everything. Well, damn, I'm thinking like it's a whole like ten thousand dollar trip or something like that. Because I used to sell timeshare. <laughs> and I used to be finessing people all day, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm tired. I, I can't do that shit no more, bro. I fucking I'm moving over to residential now, so like I feel like I'm helping people. I'm not like Yo, actually what? like <laughs> finessing, you know. Nah, it's not that. It's really not that expensive. I mean, things are a little pricier, but you know, eight hundred dollar flight hotel was like ah six hundred ish, eight hundred ish. So and then everything else was just excursions and food. I mean, we spent way more than the three thousand, but you know, average. You know, if you're finding the right spots to go and stuff yeah you don't have to spend over three three four grand that's crazy all right i'm trying to go to dubai then you know what i'm saying Let's um get it. yeah but traveling is important man because i've been i've been traveling all my life because my dad worked for a norwegian cruise line oh, okay cool. so like i've traveled and, and seen a lot of different places and shit like that i was actually baptized in norway it's crazy as fuck Oh snap! Yeah, How many bro. times have you been to Norway? Well, my dad lives in Norway right now. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, because he, he used to live in the states for like twenty years, and then my parents split up, and then he recently moved. He sold his house. Mm, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, but um, but yeah, I've been like six or seven times. It's crazy. Oh snap! I gotta I gotta get over there. Norway's beautiful, bro. Yeah. I got a cousin in Oslo, um, and then where my dad's from is like on the coast of Norway, like Olsen, like the islands and shit. Oh man, I gotta y'all travel the world now. Don't wait. Don't wait till you retire at 60, 65. Facts. Get out there, travel the world. Now, there's just so much more for you to see. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I have a question for you, man. So I've been looking at like multi-unit properties and shit like that. Um, what do you recommend? Like a like a multi-unit, like just two or like, mm -hmm. like, a, or like a lot? We got to go big, man. You got to go big? Go, we got to go big. So, you know, depending on what, what loan you're going to be using, whether you have like VA loan, FHA, if you can go for four units, go for four units, man. Uh, the rent, the rent, like the, the income needs to be, it needs to make sense. And what a lot of people do is they get these single family homes. If you stick with single family, it's going to take you so much longer versus someone who's getting multifamilies you know, four units, eight units, 12 units, 20 units even. So when you add up that the NOI, the net operating income, right? Most people are making 
maybe 10K a year, maybe on a single family. Hopefully they're making at least 10K. Yo, when you add one more unit to that, now it's 20. You add another one, 30, another one, 40. So if you can get a fourplex, you make it more than the average American salary. That's insane. It's it's real life, man. 50, 50K a month, That's that sounds beautiful. And now I didn't even mention short-term rentaling, you know, short-term. Did I just make up a word, rentaling? Rentaling? Hey, man, <laughs> fuck it. Who cares? I didn't even mention the short-term rental. So you you make a lot more money typically when you when you go uh, short-term, you know, Airbnb and stuff like that. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, my rent went up, bro. Oh, it's going to keep going up. <laughs> bro, I started at like fourteen seventy five. Now it's at like... 1550 or something like that or like 16 almost we got a studio in orlando uh a few we got four studios actually 1900 each 1900 studios studios bro studios they say that uh orlando is going to be like the next like la do you feel you think that's true i mean it depends on what they're talking about uh california is the state where most more people are leaving and florida is the state where more people are coming the top state. More people are coming to Florida than any other state. That's insane. I noticed. I noticed the traffic, bro. <laughs> like just Saxon Boulevard is like I-4 now. Yo, we can see it everywhere. Don't get caught on I-4. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I-4 is so dangerous, bro. People, <laughs> there's a lot of people that like pass away every single day on that on that interstate, bro. Yeah, I, I seen, ain't trying to be negative, but. <laughs> I seen an alligator on I-4 the other day. That's For real? When I, that's when I knew I was in Florida. I seen an alligator roadkill. Off of, on the side of I four, leaving Orlando. That's some Florida shit. That's some Florida shit, man. That's some Florida <laughs> shit, yo. Yo, so I see you going around, like you know, looking at properties and stuff like that all the time. I see you, you know, hustling and grinding. Um, when you check out a property, what are the things that you look for? Hmm, good question, man. So when I'm when I'm going for tax deeds, right? You know, now for for anybody who hasn't watched the show before, you know tax deeds. When people don't pay their property taxes, the county or local municip- municipality is going to take their property. They're going to sell it in an auction. Yeah. So we come in and we get these properties for like dirt cheap. Now the main things that we're looking for is we want to know how much money is going to have to go into this property, right? So what I mean by that is we have acquisition price, but then we also have rehab, right? And when I'm looking at rehab, what are some of the things we're looking at? You know the structure. The roof, uh, plumbing, you know, the uh, that basically those those are like the main things. There's 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 a few more things that I'm looking at, but yeah. I need to know how much money I'm going to put in the house. So to give you an example, if I can get a house for five thousand dollars, which is very realistic in my field, actually five thousand yeah. dollars, then I know I'm probably going to have to put at least thirty thousand dollars into the house. Okay, so I'm coming in all in thirty five thousand dollars. Okay. Now, one of the calculations that we like to look at is called a cash on cash return. That basically tells me how fast am I going to make money off of the money that I that I spent. Yeah. So at thirty five thousand dollars in, quick and easy calculation for you all. It's NOI, which is net operating income, divided by the acquisition cost. So acquisition cost for me thirty five thousand dollars. Now the net operating income is how much money this asset makes a year. So if this asset is making me you know, ten thousand dollars a year. I'm gonna put ten thousand dollars divided by that thirty-five uh, grand. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And that's gonna give me my net operating income. Now, I don't. I'm not the best at math, but that basically means I'm gonna make my return on investment in three years. That's right? fast, bro. That's pretty. That's pretty fast. That's really right? fast. Really fast. So in three years, basically, I mean, it's gonna be about a thirty something percent cash on cash return. So three years, give or take, I'm gonna make my money on that investment. Okay. That, yeah, that's fire. That is fire. That's amazing. That sounds. That's like music to my ears, bro. No, sometimes, yo, we have fifty percent cash on cash returns, one hundred percent cash on cash returns, depending on how cheap we got this asset yeah. and how much money. Yo, multifamily. One of my mentees just got a duplex for six thousand dollars. That's it. A duplex, six thousand dollars. Now she's gonna have to put about thirty k into oh, it. Okay. But it's double the rents. Average rents there are about a thousand dollars, so she'll be bringing in about two thousand a month. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, she's gonna make the. She's got at the end of the money. day. Yeah, she's gonna make in her money. Less than two years, she's gonna have her return on investment. That's insane. What do you think is gonna happen in the next couple of years with the market? I hear good things. I hear bad things. Mm. You know what's what's your uh, what's your thought on that? I think, man, the market. Here's the thing: the market's doing exactly what we knew it was gonna do. Right? Is no no one should be scared. We, we, we predicted this. 
So you saw the interest rates going up, right? Fed raising the rate. Yep. Uh, inflation was high. Fed raised the rate and everything. Uh, we saw a seller's market, not enough inventory, uh, supply and demand, right? That's basic, basic, uh, basic numbers. Yeah. So now what you're seeing is a lot of these properties, there's going to be a lot more inventory coming back on the market. Now, this may vary for, for people state by state or city by city, but what we're going to see is a lot more inventory start to slowly come. Now, they're not just going to dump all these properties all at once. That would you know, that'd be crazy. Yeah. But slowly, you're going to see these four these foreclosures, right? The moratorium was lifted and everything. So these investors, he's getting these properties, fixing them up, putting them back on the market. So you're going to see a lot of that. So what you can expect is... The houses that people were bidding on fifty thousand dollars over asking price, you're not really gonna see too much of that anymore, right? Now we're actually bidding under. You know, you put it. You're asking two hundred k. Yeah, I'm offering one eighty, right? Oh shit! Now, now we're not even uh, negotiating. Uh, this <laughs> yeah, there's now, no the, <laughs> the buyer's not even paying the closing costs anymore. You know, it's like hey, look, seller. You know, seller's gonna cover the the closing. Or yeah, whatever. it's it's like. Man, it, the negotiations even aren't the same because we got a lot more inventory. Why would I spend this much on your house and there's five more around the corner? Exactly. That's so true. Um, what do you think about like, like for me, for example, like I just got my real estate license. Like, um, Congrats, man. Hey, man, I, it was, bro, I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Like it took me like four times. Four times? You got applause on this thing? <laughs> yeah, bro. Like for real, man. Like. Uh, but like Nigga, we made it. that's even better bro you know what i'm saying i made it brother yeah man it took me like four times and then low-key it took him like four times three times whatever yeah. and um what what do you which route do you feel like i should take like because i know a lot of people that are buying houses right um do you feel like i should buy a house first and then get the multi-unit property or do you feel like i should just buy the multi-unit property and live in one of them and, and, and use it to buy my house buy the multi-unit Buy the multi-unit. See, in America, one thing that we do is the American way, buy a house, buy a house, buy a house, right? But you get in so much debt and, and you're not in a position to really do anything from there. Most people don't make enough money to just go dropping, just buying five houses a year, 10 houses a year, right? Yeah. So the, the smarter route, in my opinion, would be go for the multifamily first because you can live in it and, and you can cash flow it at the same time, mm -hmm. right? But we're not like that. And to be honest with you, if you can live, we kick our kids out at 18 in this country, so right? True. If we could live with our parents just a little bit longer, right? And we all come together and we start buying multifamilies together. Mm -hmm. Now we're in a better in a better place. Yeah, that's so, so true. And statistically, they're saying that kids are actually staying with their parents. They're instead of like moving out, like, you know what I mean? That, they should. We. Well, I feel like we're, we're like a smarter generation. We, man, if I could move in with my... If Bro. I could move back in with my parents, man, I would just be saving up a crap ton of money. My mom didn't want me to go, <laughs> for real, because you know that you know my mom's a Latina. You know what I'm saying? My mom's like straight from Puerto Rico, and, and we're all about family and shit. So it's hard to you know to let your son or, or your daughter go, you know, because you don't want the, you don't want nothing bad to happen. You know what I'm saying? You have a daughter too, man. Two of them. You got two daughters. Two daughters, man. I'd be damned if I'm gonna let my daughter leave the house to go pay rent to somebody else's company. Oof. Not happening. Not happening. Not happening. There, she's going to be collecting rent from day one. For real. That ass. Um, what was your biggest loss? Like ever? Because everyone wants to talk about their wins. Everyone wants to talk about this and that. But, you know, out of your whole career of what you've been doing, right? What was your biggest loss? Man, there's a lot of a lot of losses. I'm trying to think about which one of the biggest so and I'm going to ask you, like, what was your best? As well? <laughs> <laughs> you know? So we uh, I've, I've been an entrepreneur for a long time. Right. I've started I've tried to start like 12 businesses. Right. Y'all only know me for business number 13. So I've been Facts. out here in this game, just just figuring it out. Right. Facts. One of the biggest I wouldn't call this a loss, but one of the biggest losses for me last year, actually recent, uh, a, com a kind of recent loss. Uh, we were going to purchase this apartment complex and it was 17 units. And then, as you know, we got hit with the hurricane. We got hit with two hurricanes, right? So those hurricanes actually damaged the units, but we were already under contract. So we tried to renegotiate with the seller and everything because um, we need a new roof, all this and all that. Well, in the end, because of the way the contract was set up, uh, the way the way it was done, we lost our earnest money. So that was a big deal for us on on such a large purchase. We had fifty thousand dollars in that in that earnest money, actually a little more. 
for the people that don't know, uh, what's earnest money? So the earnest money deposit is something that you're typically going to put down on a real estate trans- transaction. It basically lets the buyer know how serious you are. Like, hey, look, I'm interested in this. I'm I'm going to give you five thousand dollars just so you know I'm not backing out of this deal. Like, I'm serious, right? So we lost <laughs> not just five thousand. We lost fifty, like fifty something thousand dollars. <sighs> yeah, I would have cried, bro. Ah, it's all good. It's, it's all, all good, good, brother. We learned, we learned a hard lesson. So we got back to work, uh, went back to the lab with the attorneys and everything. And we, we made sure we switched up our contracts. So that's one thing you got to be careful about. Uh, don't just take any realtor's contract. Don't just take any broker's contract. Yep. Um, start using your own contracts. Don't be scared to you know do addendums. Same thing we do with Airbnb. You know We're going to get a, a lease, but we need an addendum at least saying like, hey, look, they're okay with this. They know what we're, they know we're doing Airbnb in this location. So yeah i mean there's people out here you know i saw a clip by 50 cent and he was just like he's like man (laughs) it's different from like the streets the streets and the business are basically the same right (laughs) but these people are actually in suits they don't even need the gun but they're robbing you just what you know what i'm saying in front of your face right right in front of your face you saw that that? right in front of your face that was so true yeah and he (laughs) he's just like yo at least the person with the gun is actually like putting the gun to your head and robbing you and you know you're getting robbed at the end of the day, there's sometimes you do transactions like the contract and you don't read something and it's just like the music industry, you know, with your rights to, to the music, anything. It's a big deal. That's crazy, man. So um, what's your what's your biggest goal for 2023? Like what is your top top of the list that you Bro, need to get done? 2023, we're purchasing multifamilies. So I have a goal right now that I need at least an eight unit, maybe 10 units before March. We're, it's January 7th right now. So before the end of March, we need a multifamily, at least under contract. So it's it, hopefully around like 12 units or something, but it's got to be at least eight, at least eight units. How important is it, you know, to you, like when it comes to like living below your means? Man, that's a hard lesson that I had to learn, bro. <laughs> transparent. Let's be transparent here real quick. So when you, you need to get your budget in control now before you start making the millions right before you start making over six figures because what happened was i sucked at budgeting but then i then i made a million dollars in a year right yeah. guess what happened with that million dollars that shit is gone <laughs> no right now keep in mind of course to make a million dollars there's a lot of expenses alone to make a million dollars so you know ad spend and uh employees and this and that so so basically to make a million dollars and you might spend just you might spend 300k just to make a million right that's true so so thinking about the rule of numbers and everything um one thing that i was doing and i was using my own money to invest in real estate so my money's you know i have the equity i'm a millionaire right yeah but i had no cash because all the money was in assets i was using my own money that makes sense so biggest lesson for anybody is like you need to learn this game the game of monopoly doesn't start until the bank hands out the money but we're saving so many of us are trying to save our way to wealth and and use that to invest that's not the most appropriate way to invest and you're going to get burned it's, yeah i don't get burned i've never had a car payment bro i'm going to be real with you i never had a car payment but eventually i want to get into you know maybe something so i could show show that i can pay pay money back you know what i'm saying but yeah. like uh, i see people buying cars that are like you know they go into the dealership and they're these cars are like 60 to eighty thousand dollar, you know what I'm saying? Like cars, yeah. and like I'm like, man, you could use that money towards like an investment, something that's gonna come back, right? I mean, like that. I don't know. What's your thought on that? Like people buying cars, and and because you right when you leave the the lot, you you lose money. Like that's so just crazy. We were in a weird place with COVID because cars were actually holding value for a second. There, my we oh, bought shit. two trucks during COVID. And uh, my father-in-law ended up turn- giving his back, right? He sold it back to the dealership and he got money. What? Yes. He had it for like six months or something. He was like, look, I'm moving to Puerto Rico. I don't need it. And I was like, hey, well, just try to sell it back to the dealership. He's like, you can do that? I was like, yeah. I took it to the dealership. They wrote him a check for his truck because the Damn. chips the chips were so backed up and stuff. Yeah, him, yeah. Supply and demand, bro. That makes sense. Supply and demand. So uh, his truck was actually worth more. So wow, bro, my budget. We we did the numbers. My budget. I was spending. We we were spending thirty eight thousand dollars a month. 
$38,000 a month, man. That's a lot, bro. So we were looking, it's like, man, holy crap. Like, what? Where's, where's money going, right? Yeah. Now, the issue comes, this is what most entrepreneurs won't tell you. We, we hear the, you know, we see the IG, we think everyone's balling. We think everybody's just got it, right? Always. But here's the thing. You don't always make big numbers as an entrepreneur, at least starting out, yep. right? At least starting out. So, you know, I've had 100K months. I've had 100K months. Yeah. But guess what? I've had negative 15K months too, Oof. right? Every month's not going to be the same. It's now, like the losses, you, you know? You, yeah. want it, you want every month to be the same. You know, let's just be honest. You yeah. want every month to be the same and you're hoping that you're doing everything right to, you know, make sure that those things are coming. So at 38K a month, yeah, it's all good when you're making 100K, 50K. Yeah, those months are okay. Yeah. But when you don't make at least 38K in that month, it's like, holy shit. And then you got people to pay out. You got employees to pay. It's exactly. not just about you anymore, right? These systems got to keep running. Facebook ad spends keep still coming out, exactly. right? Yep. So uh, we did a lot of budgeting. I got my budget down from 38000 a month all the way down to like 11000 that's good. That's a that's that really good. Huge, huge. That's that's insane. How many employees do you have, bro? Right now, employees, employees. We have about five, but we also have partnerships. So okay. to give you to give you a good example, uh, we have like a sales team, right? So so they actually get commission. Like I don't talk to people. I'm too nice. I can't talk to anybody. I'll be trying to teach everybody for free. But yeah, if I pull out my IG and I show you my DMs, I have three people. Four people responding to messages alone in my DMs, and we have the autoresponder. Yeah, I saw right? that. I can't talk to everybody. It's just yeah, yeah, supply yeah. And demand, it's man. smart. It's smart. Supply I'm actually going to ask you how to, how you did that because uh, <laughs> ManyChat, ManyChat.com, man, ManyChat.com. It's not uh, it's not super expensive. You can set it all up. Have your links. Have keywords. Hey, if they type this, then it's going to send this. It's game changer. That's cool. What's your thoughts on alcohol? Alcohol. Oof. I had to cut back a little bit on alcohol. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, uh, bro. It, <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a time and a place. I think anything in excess is is not going to be appropriate for most people. Yeah. So uh same with weed. You know, a lot of people they just they're just so oh, got to smoke my next blunt. Got to uh, smoke. Yeah, gotta I got to smoke before next, I go. Got to get my next drink. Wake yep. up, wake up. First thing you're thinking about is smoking or or you know, having a drink. That's that's not the right answer. Exactly. That's not the right answer. But if you're going to have a good time, you know, you work, you yeah. bust your ass off. End of the day, you know, let me wind down a little bit. Okay, yeah. teach his own. But um, We partied one time. <laughs> we partied one time. It was a while back, but it was one time, bro. We did party one time. It and it was a... <laughs> yeah, bro. And you paid for everything, too. I felt like a piece of shit, bro. Damn. You paid for everything. You I did. I was trying to give out money. Just as like, nah, bro, you paid. I was like, nah. We already had the bottles paid for, so yeah. oh, okay. Yeah, it was that was a good time though. It was a good time. The fashion show. It was the fashion show. You remember that? Show, man. Yeah, bro. That was the first time we met, man. I was that was a good networking too. I was passing out cards left and right. People people have resources, but they're not resourceful, man. You can't just pass out cards. That's where people go wrong. Oh, take my card. Take, take my, my card. card. Take my you card. You gotta follow up with people. So yep. we met. And then here we are. I was on the show the first time, and then here we are back again. Yeah, building a relationship. Yeah. Now you're an age real estate agent, which is crazy. You know, now we're gonna do some. We're gonna yeah. keep doing business. That's together. that's crazy, right? How like we met for a reason, bro. I'm telling you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I believe in that. Like heavy, heavy, heavy. And like I saw that that post that you made the other day, where it was like, yo, if you're gonna be around, like if you're around three losers or like three broke people, like you'll be the fourth. You know what 100%. I'm saying? Like. That's I really, really believe in that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I noticed when I changed my circle and the people that, you know, were just like they they had no ambition, they had no goals. And I was like stuck in that energy. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, how important is is like keeping that circle tight and keeping it like, you know, the, the productive circle? Like how how important is that to you? Yo, that fear that you weren't born with this fear, right? Uh <laughs> people are scared to cut people off. And they need to get over that because if these if someone's around you and they're not helping you, they're taking from you. If they're not giving to you, they're taking from you, right? And I can tell you who you are. You can tell yourself who you are. Pull out your phone, right? Instagram knows who you are. They're going to keep showing you what you like to see, right? That's who you are. Whatever Ooh. you see on your IG, bam, that's who you are, right? If, if I go and open up your internet browser, I look at the last three, three, three to five websites you were on, that's who you are. Who are the last 10 people you talk to? That's who you are. Mm. 
So go do that. Look look at it like, man, dang, who am I talking to? I'm only talking to uh, just losers, low lives that people just hit me up to go smoke. That's yeah, all that's, that's all, all I, I'm talking to. Yeah. You know I need to cut these people off, right? Who am I talking to? People who just keep complaining about everybody. It's every it's everybody in the world's fault but theirs. The self sabotagers, you know those. Yeah. We all know this. Typically, you know, no offense, but you know, a lot of I have a wife, right? And a lot of a lot of times I see this from from like her girlfriends and stuff. Self sabotage, self sabotaging. Yep. Man. It's like yo, you don't see what the role, what the problem you is. How you could have prevented this Ex- two years ago. <laughs> Facts. Facts. And, <laughs> and then like, what's the definition of insanity? They keep doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result. One hundred percent. Like that's insane, man. Cut them off. Cut them off, Cut man. Them off. You know what? I I hate the cold, man. I can't I can't deal with the cold, brother. Like, where are you from originally again? In New Orleans. New Orleans. Damn. When did you when did you come to Florida? Came in Florida like 2012. Yep. Hurricane Katrina hit. Man, so long ago now. And um, I went to North Carolina for like a few months. Then I ended up in Georgia. Yeah. Finished out high school in Georgia. Joined the army at my junior year. As soon as I graduated as a senior, I was out basic training. Went to Fort Sill, Oklahoma. They then to San Antonio, uh, became a medic. Then went to DC, became a nurse. Then uh, deployed, um, deployed as a medic, as a and a military police. I mean, the army had me do whatever the hell they needed me to do, right? Yeah. So just all over the place. Afghanistan came back. Missed the first year of my daughter my first daughter's uh, life yeah um told myself i would never do that again yeah and so with my current wife she got pregnant with uh with davina baby number two yeah uh, i was like nope I, they wanted me to go back to afghanistan and i was like nah i'm not nah. leaving nah <laughs> i was a wolf of wall street with he, with he, well, yeah, yeah, i'm not fucking bro. leaving yeah bro i'm not fucking leaving <laughs> nah bro you did time too you did like what 14 years 11, in the army 11 11 yeah. that's crazy i forgot how old are you again 30 you're 30, man. 39, yeah. Mature for your age, bro. I'm 20, uh, 27. I'm about to turn 28 soon. You know, people like us, man, we grew up... When you've seen your first person get gunned down in the hood at age, you know, nine... You see shit that you weren't <laughs> supposed to see, bro. Like, at certain ages, like, you know? You grow up fast, man. You grow yeah. up fast. When all your friends are dead and you're the last one left, Facts. you know, you kind of grow up fast. Man. Yeah, life hits you hard. You know what I'm saying? Um, yo, man, I really appreciate you coming, man. Uh, it means a lot to me. Um, yo, Tax Deed Wolf. I'm gonna put his his fucking IG. I'm gonna put everything on the description. Um, bro, do you have anything else you, you want to say to the Dope Talk family? Man, look, I just created an awesome educational website. All right, I want y'all to save this, bookmark this, taxdwolfacademy.com forward slash education. It's a free site. Literally, man, look what we did with this website. But yeah. not only are there like free videos, right? Yeah. We literally put every single state, their type of sale, their interest percentages on liens. Uh, some of them even have example websites and everything. Yeah. When we're done with the site, we're actually going to have videos on each state about how to like actually participate in the auctions and everything. So just awesome free site for everybody. I don't believe in excuses. You know what I mean? People telling me, oh, I don't have the money for your mentorship. You know, don't. Come on, you go to college, you pay thousands of dollars. You go, you go out go, drinking. You uh, you go out. You go out and you spend your money on other shit. How about you spend some money on yourself and invest, man? Everybody wants to make excuses, but we go to college so we can learn how to work towards sixty five and then retire. But we can't pay a mentor three k so we can learn how to make millions. Facts. Right? It doesn't. The math doesn't matter. It, it, right? do, it you, doesn't even you, add up. You want to be a millionaire, but you can't spend ten thousand on on, a, your, on yourself. If you can't spend it on yourself, how are you gonna go buy a property? I bought a property. I came a hundred k out of my pocket to get this property. Now, how are you gonna make millions if you're scared to spend money? Spend it wisely, but yeah, come on, you gotta invest. Exactly, you gotta invest. You know, and some people never learn. They Sadly, never. But hey, man, yo, we out. This is episode seven, six, man, of season two. So, yo, you you might come around season three. Who knows? Oh, let's get it. Man. You know what I'm saying, yo, bro. I appreciate you, man. And uh, I'm knocking Mike over. That's <laughs> nah, all good, bro. Hey, man, we out of here.